How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy and welcome to another video. In the past couple of videos we've looked at the very basics of taking a concept that we've programmed in Construct and brought it into GameMaker in a very easy and non-traditional way. So there are built-in things within GameMaker that a lot of people don't want to show you because there are better ways to program them. And once you understand how GameMaker works, by all means you should probably be pursuing those ways. This is no exception. So what I'm about to show you today is a very simple collision system to add to our platformer that we programmed last time. So in the last video we have a player and we have a ground and then this ground object has the solid property uh, turned on. So now we can use any game maker language behaviors or functions that are specific to colliding with a solid object. So all of the code that we're going to be writing goes into the player object. We're going to need a create event a step event, and what happens when we actually collide with the ground. Again, there will be a couple weird bugs with this system, but that's not really my intention of this video. I don't imagine you using this system in the long term, but if you're just trying to throw out some game ideas, or if you're just trying to make a really small game, this should work just fine. So in our create event, we need to define some variables just so we have some control over them later on. So for example, and just to kind of make them similar to construct, we're gonna create a jump height variable and we'll make this 12. And we're gonna make a speed variable that will make three. And then finally, we're gonna make a space ahead variable that we will make two. And then we'll actually use the built-in friction. We'll make it 0 0.5. So the friction is to slow us down, if you remember from our movement video. So that way when we let go of the key, it'll actually stop us until we hit zero. The jump height is how high in pixels we want our character to jump. The speed is how, um, how many pixels we're going to move left and right. And then the space ahead is actually our collision. This is going to be the number that we're checking ahead of our character um, on our collision. And I'm going to show you how we do that. It's actually very simple. So just like we did before, I'm actually going to put it the way we had it before in our platformer video. Um, we did something like this. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hybrid of both ways that I've shown you how to program movement. So if we move to the left, we're going to subtract from our X coordinate. And if we move to the right, we're going to, subtra uh, we're going to add to the right coordinate. And this actually is going to be replaced with the variable speed. Okay, and then this is exactly how we've done it before, right? This is no different. I can go into the room and hit play, and nothing has changed here. We're moving left and right on the x-axis. I also have a little the ground tiles in there. We're going to address that in a second. Uh, but how do we actually check for collisions? Well, the way we do that is we can simply use the AND operator like this, which is two ANDs. GameMaker also lets you type out AND, but I'm very used to doing two ampersands like that. So that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to use what's called place free. Now the place free function, if you put your mouse cursor over it and have uh, no parameters in it, it'll tell you what parameters are required. What are we filling in the blanks with? an X and a Y. So we're going to fill this in with X and Y. Now, if we're moving to the left, we want to subtract, just as we have with our speed, uh, just as we have over here. We want to subtract from that, and we want to subtract the space ahead, which in this case is two pixels. So now it's going to move left so long as there are two pixels of free space, and that's what place free does. This function only works if there's a solid object. Once it finds a solid object, it's going to stop this, this whole thing from running. Because of our AND, both of these have to be true. So if we collide with a solid object, this is no longer true, therefore this no longer runs. So now we're just going to inverse this, and we're going to say x plus space ahead, and then the y position. And there we go. Now we have very basic collisions attached to our super simple moving on the X coordinate uh, platformer movement. Now, unlike in the platformer video, uh, I actually didn't use the X coordinate, I used H speed. And I've noticed that H speed kind of messes up a whole lot with this system. So instead, we're just gonna be borrowing from the platformer video, the V speed for when we jump. 
So we're going to just type in if keyboard check pressed board W like so. We're going to say V speed equals the negative jump height. So in our jump height equals 12. So now when we hit the W key, we should actually jump like our platformer. V speed is going to automatically just add 12 pixels to us. So that's all great and that all works, but we don't have any gravity when we didn't put any basic gravity in there because we want our gravity to fall. And this is where a lot of collision systems may get messed up. And this might be where this collision system gets messed up, but we're gonna write an if statement for if our place free is X and then our Y plus our space ahead. So two pixels. And if it is, then we're gonna say our gravity equals one, meaning we are in the air. If not, we are on the ground. And when we're on the ground, we don't need to have gravity. When we are on the, when we're in the air, we do, that way we can actually fall down. So watch this now. We don't have any collisions, so this is going to mess up, but we can now hop. Pretty cool. We can hop and we can move left and right, but our gravity is messing up because we don't have any collision here. So in the collision event, what we wanna do is we wanna do what we've done in the other video and set our V speed to zero. So once we actually collide with the ground, we're not jumping at all. And the only difference here is we wanna actually use a built-in function for when we interact with the solid object, and we have two. We've got move contact all or move contact solid. Now, move contact solid is going to detect whenever it hits the very first solid and then move contact all will detect any solid objects or anything with a valid mask. So let's try solid and let's say, okay, it takes two parameters. And you can notice down here in game maker that when you use a game maker language function and you don't know what to plug in, it'll give you the hint right here. So the first thing we need is the direction. And you'll notice that this goes green because this is actually the built-in direction for my player object, whichever direction we are currently facing and a max distance. And I'm just gonna plug in the number 12. So this is going to say, okay, push us out 12 pixels, depending on which direction we're facing. So that is actually going to be our collision, but we'll still need to limit how many times we can hit this. And the way we can do that is by saying, if the place free that is not active is Y plus our space ahead. So here's how this works. This is just saying if we're pressing the W key and the Y plus two pixels is not free, then don't let us jump. So it's actually just going to be limiting us from jumping again. So now I can only tap it once. But now you'll notice that we actually have collisions, just like so. So let's actually go into our room and copy and paste this a couple times until we have the most beautiful level ever something like this. And a cool tip here is you can kind of make it however you want. And then you can even kind of copy this as one and do this individually if you want more control. And then if you really need to select all of them, you can hold down shift and click and then you can copy and paste like so, something like that. Um, let's try to make this a little bit more even terrain because as I'm saying, this is not you know the most perfect system. This is not as pixel perfect as we can make it. There's definitely gonna be some bugs with this system. Um, but I wanted to show you this way as an alternative to some of the other ways out there that might be a little bit more confusing. So some of the bugs we might encounter, and fortunately we're not encountering them here, but you might encounter, is when it actually snaps to the side here, it might actually try to look ahead for other pixels or for other solid objects. And it might try to reposition you and kind of glitch you out. So I don't want you to think that this is the ultimate uh, solution for collisions, but this is really a good starting point to just kind of throw something out there and saying, okay, you know what? This is the collision that I need just to get this, just to illustrate my proof of concept game. So again, we've combined, you know, the two movement types that we've learned with V speed and our X coordinate. Uh, and now we just learned about the place free function and how we can do some simple collisions. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next one.